beauty of Brazil's state as the World Cup looms over the country is a far cry from the perfectly measured pitches, golden sands and incredible landmarks of Latin America. Death, corruption, poverty, violence, drugs and prostitution run right through the nation and its many slums, better known in Brazil as favelas. 600,000 foreign tourists are expected to descend upon the nation. 600,000 people that Brazil has paid to accommodate. People that will come for a month and then leave. But the effect on the local population has been devastating and could last for years. If you want to know the truth about what's happening in Brazil, you're in the right place. I'm going to tackle each section separately, so here's your chance to pick and choose the areas you want to find out about. For those on mobile and tablets, I've stuck the timings in the description below. Prostitution is legal in Brazil. That may be shocking to hear for some, but something even more shocking is that in March 2013, Brazil's Higher Court of Justice ruled that adults having sex with a child is not necessarily considered a crime. Since 2009, the age of consent has been 14 years old. Children as young as 10 years old are being forced to sell themselves on the street in order to make money from fans coming over. If you saw kids on the street during a normal celebration, it would be completely innocent. In Brazil, it could mean something entirely different. In preparation for the World Cup, the prostitutes of Brazil have been offered an opportunity. The chance to learn English to entertain the foreign visitors. Igor Fuchs, a volunteer teacher, says, we teach basic expressions and also have demonstrations with erotic paraphernalia, so they can learn the names, how to use them and how to propose them. Both women and children are being exploited to squeeze money out of the tourists. Individuals in Brazil may be protesting their rights to basic amendments, a fair wage, public transport and security, but as a collective, they also represent a fight for progression and to fix what the past has left behind. Rio alone has 763 favelas, which are home to 1.4 million people, 22% of the population. The poor living near the beaches, hotels and shopping districts have been chased back to the slums and many have lost their homes to construction. The landless workers' movement marched the streets of Sao Paulo against urban developments which have left many homeless. An indigenous protest in Brasilia marched against the backdrop of the main Garincha National Stadium, the most costly of them all, protesting against the rise in real estate prices and forcing lower income families out of their homes. Some could say the authorities are trying to sweep the dirt under the rug. The people of Brazil deserve basic human rights, meaning good healthcare, education, food and sustainable living. The month-long tournament has brought wealth to the nation, a wealth spent on constructing stadiums and giant state projects, which has brought only 0.2% to add to Brazil's economic growth of this year. Brazilian President Dilma Rousseff has defended the $11 billion expenditure on the tournament, but local residents say that the development projects they were promised have been delayed or were never spoken of again. This graffiti in the Villa Flavia shantytown takes centre stage in showing the hardships of life that people here are tired of seeing with the World Cup as a backdrop. The World Cup has brought the construction of many stadiums to host the matches. This has left numerous unfinished infrastructure projects which will be rushed to completion. The way many Brazilians see it is giant state projects run by the government full of injustice, lacking safety, being mismanaged and halting any advancement in society. This safety and mismanagement has led to death. The death toll when this video was made stood at an estimated nine people. A worker building the monorail in Sao Paulo died after construction collapsed. One by electric shock, three fell to their death, one suffered injuries after dismantling a crane, two died under a crane collapse and one died in a fire. All these tragic deaths symbolise the danger that the workers face in trying to complete the construction for the tournament. This statistic doesn't even take into account the people killed in pacifying the warring favelas. Brazil's murder rate has more than doubled over the past three decades, according to latest research. Brazil's slums are wracked with violence. Widespread protests kicked off years ago and small-scale demonstrations continue. A police unit to pacify urban areas and lower crime rates was launched in 2008, which did work for a while with a 50% drop in homicide rates in Brazil. 
That is, until now. Despite efforts by police to rid the favelas of crime before the tournament start, it has had little impact. President Rousseff has said the country is ready, but metro worker strikes and demonstrations from Brazil's people threaten to coincide with the beginning of the tournament. Rousseff said, there are people who claim the resources for the World Cup should have been directed to healthcare and education. I hear and respect those opinions, but I don't agree with them. It is a false dilemma. Protests have descended into rubbish fires and Molotov cocktails from the people, tear gas, rubber bullets and pepper spray from the police. The anarchic group Black Bloc led an anti-World Cup protest march in Sao Paulo on May 24th. They are linked with destroying banks, trashing public property, throwing petrol bombs and attacking police with stones and clubs. People have resorted to violence against the vast sums of public money being spent on the World Cup as opposed to being used to ensure acceptable healthcare, education and housing. Nearly two billion has been spent on security alone, deploying 100,000 police and 57,000 troops. Although the police had initial success in evicting gangs from the slums, the move has been criticised as just as placing them elsewhere. With violence on the rise again in the pacified areas, it appears drug traffickers are seeking to regain their lost territory. According to Compassion International in Fortezella, the approximate 35,000 inhabitants earn less than the minimum wage of $223 a month, with families of up to 10 sharing less than 20 square metres of space. All the children want is to be far from home, so they quit studying and become an easy target for the drug dealers. In order to maintain their addiction, they simply go to the streets. And where there are celebrations, there are drugs. And where do those drugs come from? Drug traffickers. The first capital command cartel known as PCC in Brazil threatened to launch the World Cup of Terror. As a powerful gang responsible for the murder of more than 100 of the city's police officers, this threat aims to show the Brazilian authorities how much control the gangs have. Favelas are in conflict to who will be in charge of drugs demand for the World Cup and the pacifying police are taking on the areas one by one with many innocent being caught in the crossfire. According to reports, they'll only be able to take back 40 of 1,000 favelas by the time the World Cup starts. Soccer in Brazil was a turning point for those who didn't have much money. Something accessible, that's what it represented. The FIFA World Cup 2014 is the most expensive in history and leaves many homeless, exploited or even dead.